thanks again for being here, um, for being a part of this conversation today. We'll have time for a uh, question and answer after I get done sort of talking about the things that we're doing. But if you have any questions, feel free to throw them down in the uh, in the chat and Meryl will be watching that. Meryl, our admin uh, for the CLD, she'll be watching that and um, we'll try to answer those as we go or if we don't catch them as we're going along, then we'll do a Q&A and then after that, uh, Katie will talk a little bit about her work with GoCamp and uh, some of the essential things that, uh, that she looks for whenever she's planning sort of local missions. Uh, we realize that this summer is going to look different for, for all of us uh, one way or another. Um, if, if, we, if we are sort of back to somewhat of a normal uh, summer, it's still not going to be normal in a lot of ways. And so uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for, for checking this out. Uh, we've had a lot of really difficult conversations over the last couple of weeks in the camping and retreat ministries uh, world. Um, and as you can imagine, um, those difficult conversations revolved around things like closing down our camp and retreat sites. Um, and then as uh, the social distancing has extended itself, um, those conversations then turn to, well, what do we do about summer? Um, and so we had those conversations. A lot of people were, uh, we, we discussed it with a lot of people and uh, many of you have probably seen the announcement that was put out on the Bridgeport uh, Camp Facebook page on Friday uh, that we will not be having uh, summer camps, at least not in the way that we had originally planned. Um, which uh, many of you know, a lot of organizations um, have uh, sort of done similar things, either canceled their programs altogether um, or have sort of made a switch to some sort of virtual uh, component. Um, and so we made that difficult decision and uh, are so thankful for the outpouring of support that we received from folks saying that, you know, we're really sad that camp isn't going to happen this summer, but we understand uh, that. that that's just a part of the times that we live in. And so we appreciate the, the compassion and the grace that we were given. Um, and you know, what this time has also given us is an opportunity to, to dream and to think about um, other ways in which we can reach our uh, camp families and uh, communities in this, in this time. And so um, we've been dreaming, we've been planning, sort of trying to figure out what that looks like. And so we're excited to sort of uh, show off for the first time to, you know, a large group of people, what we're calling uh, Bridgeport in a Box. Um, and so basically what we're trying, what, what the point is, is we're trying to figure out how do we get at least a portion of, you know, what makes Bridgeport Camping Conference Center and especially summer camp into uh, our homes and into our churches um, and, and to people who can take the activities and the curriculums and all the things that we love about Bridgeport um, and at least have some presence um, in the communities in this time of social distancing. And so um, I'm going to share my screen here and show you uh, the website that, uh, that we'll be using to uh, share this information and this curriculum and all of these different, um, different things with you. Um, a simple website, bridgeportinabox.com, um, simple but that's what we're calling it. Um, and so it's, it's, it's basically will be a, a resource that will be found online um, and it's designed um, to be used in multiple different ways. So one of the things that, that we were thinking about and we thought about, you know, how, how do you do camp in a virtual space or in a time of social distancing? And uh, one of the things that was clear early on is that um, this doesn't just happen in one space, but it has to be something that can be used in multiple spaces, um, depending on uh, different families, different churches, church size, um, whether you have a children's coordinator or youth director or somebody who, you know, does your programming, um, or maybe you don't, maybe you're at a smaller church where you don't have somebody that does that, and so your senior pastor or, or volunteers do it. And so we tried to design a curriculum that could be used in the home, but also something that could be easily, uh, easily used with church groups um, in their normal sort of uh, gatherings. Uh, we designed it in a way, and I'll show, I'll show it off to you here in uh, just a minute. Um, we used sort of a modular design. And what that means is we, we created it in different sort of aspects so that um, if all you're really looking for and all you really need 
um, are the games and the activities and maybe the Bible study portion, um, then we've separated that out so that you can take that, um, just that which you need. Uh, you know, we've, we've developed it all, but it's sort of designed to sort of use however it's best for your group. Maybe you already have like uh, a, a normal way of opening up your time together. And you know, you don't really need that sort of opening time or reflection, or maybe you have a way of closing or different things. And so we wanted to make it um, uh, something that could be, again, be used in multiple different ways. And so uh, where we started was actually with last summer's curriculum. So if you were at summer uh, camp at Bridgeport in 2019, um, we did curriculum entitled Blueprints of the Church, where basically what we did was we took our campers through different spaces within the church and talked about sort of what it means to be the church in those different spaces and what they have to teach us about um, church. And so um, when sort of trying to figure out what, you know, what this could look like and what this could be in a virtual space, um, that's where we started. It was a curriculum that had already been formed. Um, and so it was a little easier to sort of drag and drop and sort of look and, and, and play with. And, and um, so that's where we started. We retitled it, We Are the Church. Um, which, I mean, when we're thinking about the times and, and that we're in, uh, it's kind of a fitting uh, a set of lessons when we think about not being able to be in our physical buildings, uh, but to remember that we, we actually are the church wherever we are at any time. Um, and so then we took it and, uh, and again, I'm gonna show that to you in just, in just a little bit. Um, we're working on our 2020 curriculum. So now that we've made the decision that we are um, at least not doing camp in the normal way and uh, for 2020, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the things that we're hoping to do in 2020, um, but we know that we're not gonna be doing camp in, in the same way. Um, so we now have sort of the freedom to go back to the 2020 curriculum that um, is basically completed. Um, it's still in sort of an editing and, and, and moving around phase. Um, and go back and look at that. And so we're hoping to meet with, uh, with the folks who helped us write this curriculum and then uh, change it over and, and make it fit into this virtual space using the template um, that we created with, uh, with the last year's curriculum. And so luckily because that work has been done, because we started this process, at least looking at what it could be um, a couple of weeks ago and really starting to build the templates, hopefully, uh, that'll help us get this curriculum out to all of you uh, a lot quicker. And so that'll be coming soon. Um, but basically what we're asking, you know, for those of you, I guess, who want to sneak peek, normally you'd have to come to camp to, you know, get some of these things. Uh, but we're just asking questions of, the, about God. Where is God? When is God? You know, who is God? And, and why does God love us? Um, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of content in that. There's a lot uh, to be explored. And so, we're excited about being able to bring that to our, our campers and our churches and our families um, sort of through this uh, virtual medium. And the last thing that we're working on for the site um, really has sort of uh, kind of come up in the last couple of days as, as having conversation with different people about, um, you know, what are those things about Bridgeport that, that you just love when you think about, you know, going to Bridgeport summer camp? Uh, we use the picture of, you know, a shaving cream fight because so many of our camps just you know, kids look forward to, for whatever reason, I don't know, uh, dousing themselves in shaving cream and throwing it at other people. Um, but there are a lot of things. There are a lot of things that make Bridgeport Bridgeport and things that, that people look forward to. And so uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing on this website is collecting some of those things, some of those activities, uh, some of the recipes for some of the foods that people like to eat. Um, so, you know, Crispitos, for some reason, are like a big deal at Bridgeport. Um, and so Caleb is working hard for working hard at getting us a list of, of what type of crispitos do you eat in Bridgeport? You wanna, is there a way that you can buy them? If not, is there a way that you can make them in your own home to have just a little bit of Bridgeport um, sort of uh, with you? Maybe, uh, maybe our parents haven't ever had, you know, the crispitos. And so maybe that's an opportunity for us to, to sort of spread that around a little bit. But some of those recipes and, and some of those activities and, um, we're even thinking about the potential of, you know, some of these activities making them like uh, competitions, team competitions or different things like that. Uh, so just trying to, you know, uh, bring some of the excitement, some of those activities that we all look forward um, 
from Bridgeport uh, into the homes, into our churches. Um, and yeah, it's going to look different. Uh, you know, instead of us being in person, we're going to be posting pictures and videos to Facebook and to Instagram and um, to the different forums that we're using. Um, but we're still hoping that through, throughout all of this, we can, uh, we can still, you know, have some of that community um, and keep Bridgeport fresh on our minds and, and make it to be something that we're just even that much more excited to, uh, to, to go to and to be a part of whenever we are able to get there. So uh, I want to just sort of show you uh, the curriculum and what it's going to look like. Um, and so when you look at your available curriculums, when you go to the web page and you look here, you're going to see sort of two options. Um, and again, trying to develop this in a way that allows it to work for as many people as possible. Um, and so we've got a full curriculum. And what that means is when you, when you go to full curriculum, it's going to be basically put together in a normal style of curriculum with intros, all of it sort of put together. And we'll, um, we'll show that to you here in a second. But I want to start with the individual modules because I think it gives a, it gives a, a, a larger view of sort of what we're uh, what we're working with and what's going to be a part of the curriculum. So, um, and so I'm just going to scroll down here to uh, to lesson one, which is about welcoming. Um, you'll remember if you were at camp uh, last summer, we we this was the this was the narthex, this was the welcoming center, whatever that place in your you know in your church is. And um, so each lesson is going to come with four parts: opening prayers and reflections. And so these are. Um, you know, how you're going to get your group started off. Again, if you've already got a way that you normally start off, maybe it's a daily check-in, maybe it's, you know, um, whatever thing it is that, that each group does, um, then, you know, you can use that. You don't necessarily have to have to do this part. Um, but we've got, we've got for you, if this is something that, you know, that you're looking for, uh, opening prayer and reflections. Uh, there's a candle there. It's optional if that's, a, if that's what you want to make a part of, of what you're doing. And then you'll see just some prompts, some basic questions to sort of start you with your day. Um, and this is, uh, for this particular curriculum, um, we chose to keep the opening prayer and reflection the same through each uh, lesson and sort of a, let's all get started on the same, uh, the same way each day. Um, but again, maybe you do something different. Um, and so uh, that's something that, that you can do. And then here we've put all of the games and activities that you'll find in lesson one. Uh, we basically just uh, put them on a singular page. Um, and you'll notice that, that when we went through and we just, like looked at uh, the games and activities that were already in the curriculum, um, basically what we were thinking is how does this work in a virtual space? So one of the things on the first day of camp that we're always trying to do with our groups is how do, we, uh, how do we get the groups to know one another on a more personal level? We're going to be asking these people to sit with one another, to read scripture, um, to have discussion questions and all those different things. So, so we think it's really important, especially in those first couple lessons, um, that they get to know, uh, you know who, who they're doing this with, who they're in community with at this time. Um, and so basically what we did was we took that, those, those questions and that activity um, and we threw it online for an online poll. Um, and so if you click this link, then you can go through and you can answer different questions about who you are, types of food you like, favorite seasons. And then at the end, when you go through, it's gonna show you all the answers now. There haven't been that many answers because, well, this is you know just a new website. But the, the point is that as we do this curriculum and as people are going through and filling out this survey, um, those results will be added into all of this. And so you'll actually get a sense of the people who have done this curriculum um, of the different types of food that they like, right? Uh, and you'll be able to look at those results, um, favorite season of the year, and, and potentially see, well, you know, what, what they, you know, what the general sort of group uh, think is. And again, there's some, there's some questions down there um, that sort of prompt any discussion after that. Uh, what did you notice about the answers? Well, a lot of people like summer, not a lot of people like winter. You know, um, what are some of the ways that were different? So uh, again, trying to think about how do we take some of the things that we normally love about Bridgeport um, and create them in a virtual space. Um, so you'll notice the second activity here uh, was another activity that we did in the curriculum. Um, 
this is designing a church, right? This curriculum is all about we are the church. Um, we spent a lot of time talking about the different buildings. And so we had them uh, with, we gave them materials at camp and we had them build a church. Well, we realized that um, doing this in a virtual space is probably going to look like them being in their house somewhere. Um, so even the supplies you can see, uh, paper, art supplies, Legos, recyclable materials, anything you want, right? Create a church with whatever you have. Um, and then uh, the way we sort of try to make this more communal is, then we ask people that, uh, that feel like they want to do that, it's not required. Uh, but post your creation on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, use hashtag we are the church, uh, mark the location as Bridgeport Camp and Conference Center, even though you're not there to sort of help collect all of those different things together. Um, and we're still working on this. This is still a work in progress. Some of those uh, ways in order to, to sort of tag things and make sure that we're collecting it all. Um, but again, trying to take these things that, that people have designed in their homes and then share them in a digital space where we can uh, look and see what other people have done um, and share those creations. Um, and then the, the, the last activity here, again, it's, a, it's about me, right? It's again, those first, those first couple lessons are all about sort of getting to know. Um, and so we've asked people to, um, to record a video, tell us your name, your grade, your church, all those things that you would normally say. Um, and then one interesting thing that you wanna know about us. Um, one of the things that we're still working on is, you know, what, what space in which do we share this? Um, there's a, on the website, there's a, an ability to create a username um, and there's a forums. Um, we're still working on making sure that that's a secure and safe place for pe people to post. Um, so we're still working on some of those things. But again, trying to think about how do you take a normal activity that you would do introducing yourself to other people and share it in, uh, in a larger communal space. Um, and so those are sort of just a breakdown of you know, how the games and activities uh, section works. And then you've got the Bible study. Maybe, maybe you're a youth director and maybe, maybe you just need resources. Maybe you just, uh, you know, you have done just about everything you can think of. Um, and your kids aren't really interested in the idea of a virtual camp and camp's not really their thing. Um, but you know what, I could, I could use some, some scriptural resources. I could use some ideas for, uh, for a lesson here or there, um, that would really be meaningful. And so, you know, you can take this, right? And we've got a scripture reading. Uh, we've got discussion questions uh, based around uh, that scripture. And then we've got our, our digging deeper questions. So this is normally where we would place our, you know, children's camp, junior high and senior high uh, questions. For those of you who don't know, when we write our curriculum, we write our curriculum to be used across all camps. So that uh, we've been doing this, this will be our fifth year doing this. And so, um, this is something that allows us to have some continuity across all of our camps. Um, but one of the things that we have to do in that is we have to be really mindful about making sure that we've got questions that match every developmental level. Um, and so basically that's what this set of questions is. We've got our surface or our more concrete questions, and then it gets a little bit more abstract with the deeper and then the deepest questions, those really abstract questions that get these young people thinking um, on, a, on a much different level. It's not to say that children couldn't, can't, can't answer those. I've been lucky enough to lead small groups where, uh, with children uh, where they were able to get into some of those deeper questions because we just had a bond and we were able to, uh, and they were thinking, you know, sort of on that level, uh, but not assuming that everybody is. Um, and so we've got that Bible study portion uh, available as well. And then again, just to sort of show you the closing uh, discussion and prayer Again, just some final questions um, to sort of wrap up the lesson, things to remember uh, about the lesson, and then a closing prayer there at the end. Um, nothing, nothing huge. Um, I want to go back and sort of show you. So those are, those are the modules. Those are all the different sort of ways that uh, you can pull and, and take, um, especially those of you who are working in churches and, um, you know, ha have a better idea of, of how you want to structure your time together and different things like that. Um, but we also wanted to make sure that we had a, a, a full curriculum, something that maybe uh, for somebody who just wants, you know, I just want to, I just want to download, I just want to go somewhere where like everything is sort of spelled out for me. It's, it's all in order. It's all like, 
you know, in a certain way. And so that's sort of what we've done with, uh, with the full curriculum version. And again, you're gonna see the content is the same, um, but the way we have structured is a little different. Um, so we've got leader material, which is gonna be sort of some of that added material that we put in the leader's guide. Um, and then basically all we did was we stitched the, we stitched the curriculum together like you would normally um, take it in. Um, opening prayer and reflection, uh, first activity, and then we move into our scripture, our discussion, our digging deeper, um, our second activity, third activity, and then our closing, uh, closing discussion and prayer. And basically, so if all you wanted to do was log on and basically just lead your group through it and just scroll through, um, you could either, you could even share it on Zoom, screen share it like I'm doing right now so that everybody could see it. Or you could have it up in the background on an iPad somewhere else um, and just scroll through and see all of the curriculum uh, put together um, all in one place. And so that's, uh, that's something we thought was, was, was necessary, again, trying to create it um, to be able to be utilized for, uh, for as many people as possible. Um, and so that's basically what, what we're working with. And so, um, so the goal is to take that template, to take that design, um, and the 2020 curriculum that talks about the questions about who God is, um, and fit that curriculum into, into this, into this digital space. Um, and we're even hoping that as we go through this and as we, you know, get the 2020 curriculum, um, done, maybe we can go back even further and look at, uh, you know, 2018, 2017, um, when we talked about the Holy Spirit, or we talked about um, I am uh, questions and statements um, from Jesus. All of that is just great material that um, uh, that's just sitting on a shelf somewhere, either uh, physically or digitally. And so why not, uh, why not get that out to as many people as possible? Um, and so that's, uh, basically what we're working on. When we think about, oh, um, let's see, let's see, any questions? Um, do I have any questions at this point? Is there um, a price to this? No, so yeah, so this is all free, no price to it. Um, we, we're thinking about, um, you know, ways in which maybe we could uh, put some things together for folks to purchase uh, t-shirts and different other ways uh, that they could, uh, you know, purchase a couple of things and maybe make a little bit of money for, for Bridgeport. This is a difficult time because um, both of our camp and retreat centers um, are, are closed currently and we don't know when they're gonna be able to, to open back up. But we also um, realized that we just wanted to make this available to folks in, um, there may be some ways down the road um, that you could help. Uh, we'll definitely take donations. Um, if there are, uh, if you just love it, uh, we'll, we'll, we've definitely got space for that, but we're not expecting anything. Uh, we basically have spent a lot of work and time trying to, to get this curriculum to folks that we, um, that we want, uh, we want to make sure that, that folks have access to it, uh, have, um, so have access to it, so. Um, yeah, so let me talk a little bit about, uh, keep the, keep the chat going. Um, I want to talk about sort of the way we're thinking about summer camp and, um, you know, some of, some of, some of our hopes and dreams, uh, because, um, we, we don't just want to sort of put this out there and that to be it. We've, we've got other things. So we're, we're thinking about summer in two parts, basically. Um, and so this first part is really, the, the June part, which is what we're calling part one. Um, and so when we start developing the 2020 curriculum, um, we'll, only, we'll only be putting out the first half of the curriculum. Um, and so it'll still work. Basically the way the curriculum was originally designed was each day dealt with one of those questions that we talked about, where is God, when is God, all of those different things. Um, and there were two lessons in each day. And so basically what we'll be doing is we'll be giving out one of those, um, one of those lessons each day that deals with one of those questions. Um, and then our hope is that in July, if we have reached a point to where social distancing, distancing restrictions have been lifted and we are able to, uh, we really hope 
that we can have some mini camps or some uh, three day, two night uh, weekend style camps at Bridgeport. Um, this is something that, that Bo has been working on and uh, we're gonna try and be creative about how we do that to be able to get as many people as possible if that's an option. Um, and if we are able to do that, then that is where we will uh, debut our second part of the curriculum. Um, so even if you've done this virtual, this, this first part with your own group in your church or in your home, um, you've still got a reason to come to a camp in July if, we, if we're able to do that, if we're able to, to meet um, in whatever size we're able to meet, um, because we'll have that second part ready to go. And if, um, unfortunately, we're not able to meet, then um, at that point, we will basically take the second part of the curriculum um, and upload it to the website in the same form um, and allow you to do that uh, with your groups, with your families, however you did the first part. Um, and so we, we just didn't want to put everything out there, have people go through it, and then, you know, have no content or anything um, to share. Plus, that's going to be a shorter amount of time, so it, it fit really well with our, with our time. Um, so, that's, so that's how we're thinking about it. We're thinking about it in two parts. Um, and so uh, our goal is to have the We Are the Church curriculum fully built out by May, for, May 4th. That's, uh, that's the timeline that I've sort of set for, for moving all that stuff over, having all of it done. Um, and then we're still working. Um, I've got to have conversations with folks in the curriculum running team. Um, but sort of the time in my mind that is set is May 25th for having uh, part one of this 2020 curriculum uh, available, and we might be able to get it out sooner, um, and it might be it might be a little later. Again, we've got to we've got to convene a group of people, um, but I, I feel confident that we'll be able to do that. And so those are our two goals: May 4th for the We Are the Church curriculum to have all of that stuff out there, and then May 25th for the uh, 2020 uh, curriculum. So that's sort of the timeline that we're working with. Um, so yeah, um, a part of uh, you know a part of those mini camps. Uh, Wally's saying uh, clustering churches together. Um, I think that's a great idea. You know, one of the uh, one of the ideas that we have for mini camps um, is the potential for maybe uh, churches to be able to bring um, their children, junior high and senior high, all together and do like a larger camping thing together or to get uh, you know, a group of, ch of churches together. I think um, doing this on, in a virtual space together is important. I know that we have had um, conversations with some of our summer camp directors uh, about the potential for continuing with the week of summer camp that they had already planned on doing it, um, but committing to having a specific uh, time each day uh, for that week of camp where those camp directors would log on um, and folks who wanted to register to uh, participate in that um, in that time could do so ahead of time, get emailed a link and a password. Um, and then the camp directors and the volunteers uh, would basically lead folks through the curriculum um, like we just talked about, you know, where you're going through um, the activities and allow people to to you know, experience it in a larger setting, right? Kind of like you're talking about uh, you know, putting those churches together, um, and then utilizing uh, Zoom breakout rooms for some uh, facilitated smaller group discussions and different things like that. Um, so we're definitely uh, thinking about that. I think there's a lot of energy, especially around with our camp directors, around doing something like that. Um, and so, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, Paul says, would the second half of the workbook be available even after July? Yes, yeah, I think I think it would still be uh, available, uh, Paul. Uh, it would just be a matter of, uh, you know, getting it on the website um, and we can do that. But yeah, I think it's, it'll be released either way. So um, it's more about just like not, not releasing it um, until we sort of know what July is gonna look like and then we'll release it prior to, but. That's a good question. So. Any other questions? You guys can, um, I mean, we're not a huge group, so if you want to unmute your mic and, and ask a question, I think that's okay. 
Hi, yes, this is Angela. Are, is the curriculum um, for all grade levels of campers, like from third through 12th grade? Right, yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, designed, it's designed for that third through 12th grade. And again, if you go through, when you get to, the only things that are really uh, sort of separated out are, are the discussion questions. And again, we've got the surface level questions, the digging deeper, and then the deepest questions. And so if you're working with a younger group, you might only sort of talk about those, you know, first couple of questions and leave some of those other ones, um, or just know that those other questions are going to be harder. But yeah, it's designed to be, to be utilized. Um, it'll be interesting to see um, the, the different ways in which, um, you know, younger groups utilize the curriculum versus like maybe a group of teenagers. Um, so that, you know, that just because the, the technology gap is so different. Um, and so youth directors may have the ability to, to do some things and to tweak some things and, um, you know, that would be maybe potentially harder for, for children. But yes, the curriculum itself is designed for uh, third through 12th grade. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, Sarah, we don't know as far as, um, you know, what those mini camps in July, whether you would be grouped with other churches. I mean, um, that's one of those things that we're working out. Uh, it'll, it'll depend partly on um, any social distancing guidelines on how many people we can have. I mean, we may, we may be limited to, you know, 50 or 100 or, you know, whatever. And so that would definitely limit, you know, what other, you know, how many churches we could get together and sort of how all that has worked out. Um, but I know that that's something that Bo is following really closely and, um, and thinking out. Um, so yeah, if camp directors are going to move forward to offer a virtual option, you know, the idea with that decision. Uh, pretty soon, we'll we'll make sure that that information is is uh, is out on our Facebook page. It, we'll we'll put it everywhere. We'll also throw it on the website um, under the events. There'll be an events tab, so you'll be able to see. Um, but there's a lot of energy around that. So I would, I you know, again, I don't want to speak for people because I haven't had you know, all of the conversations that need to be had um, to guarantee that something like that would happen. Um, but I know at least some of the camp directors are really excited about that opportunity. Um, so, so yeah, we'll make sure to get that information out to you um, as, soon as, as soon as we know. Uh, a good question too. Anything else? Yes, it's, um, is there a limit, a limited time in which you can use the curriculum? Will they pop up weekly or the the weeks that the camp was um, originally ready or just during the summer? Yeah, no, I, this is something that I think this is something that we want to continue to do and continue to leave available to churches as they're going through this um, and, and continue to add on to. So uh, when we release that first part of the curriculum, uh, we will release the entire first part. We won't, we won't wait and, and do it, you know, in sections. We'll release the entire first part. Um, and then uh, if we have any dates available, you know, if we have the, the dates and times for when those camps will meet um, via Zoom through us, um, then folks can register for that. Or again, if they want to do it in their own churches or with their own youth directors or children's directors, then they'll be able to schedule that time and figure out how that works best for them. Um, and then same with the uh, second part of July. And then we'll keep it available. We'll keep it up. Um, so, you know, and, and again, hopefully add to it as we, as we have more content. So. Anybody else? Cool. Uh, so we'll have, um, We'll have a little bit more time at the end if there's uh, if there are any other questions that maybe you, you didn't think of. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Cool. Um, so now I want to throw it over to uh, Katie Pryor. She is the executive director of GoCamp and probably the real reason why you're all here. Uh, let's be honest. She's awesome. And uh, she's going to be talking about uh, some of the work that she does with GoCamp and uh, how that work might be helpful to those of you who are trying to figure out how to do uh, you know, local missions or, or, you know, some of your, your summer plans may have changed from going somewhere else and not trying to stay local. Um, and GoCamp has been doing that for uh, a couple of summers now. So Katie's gonna, she's gonna share from her experience. All right, um, some of you may or may not know me. I am Katie Pryor. I came on to staff last year. 
So I had my first full summer last year. I was hoping to have a full summer this year, but we're making that a little look a little different. Um, as far as Go Camp, we did go ahead and follow suit with Bridgeport and canceled our commitments for June. But our July commitments are still standing, so don't get worried. We're still just trying to figure out what's going on with everything right now. Um, with Go Camp, we intentionally go into communities who are underserved, who or may not have access to getting to our larger campsites like Bridgeport. And we partner with host sites, and our host sites are typically our UMC churches, but we're not limited to our UMC churches. They can be colleges or universities or any other nonprofits. And throughout the um, fall and spring, I spend a lot of that time going out to our host sites and conversing with them and figuring out what their community looks like and what they feel would be best to bring to them as far as the experience of Go Camp and the summer camp experience. <clears throat> and so it's a lot of intentional work. It's not just us showing up with a kit and hoping that it fits your community, but it's actually customized to the community and what they feel is needed best. And with a lot of the host sites that we do work with, um, some of the sites, it's more of their congregation children, but also some of the sites, they're just community and neighborhood children. And so a lot of the misconception is, is that you have to have a bunch of kids in your church already to have a go camp out there. But our goal is to connect the church to its community and the community back to a church as well. And with everything that's happened so far, what we're looking at doing right now for our June is to partner with nonprofits, specifically those who work in the farming. So like the We Over Me Farm and the Harvest Project, we're gonna reach out to them about seeing how we can get nutrition and health the boxes to the people who we would have been serving because when they do come to our camps a lot of those kids who we do serve those are the main two meals that they get to eat for the day I mean the main meals so lunch and snacks and breakfast and everything and so for June I'm kind of sad we had to cancel it because we were going to pilot our first option as a mission assignment and so we partnered with Creekwood United Methodist Church and they were going to serve as our missional staff at one of our go camp sites for St. Phillips. And so that's also another option that we're promoting and pushing out to our North Texas conference is that if you're having to reconsider what you're gonna do for your youth groups and your children for their mission um, plans, because a lot of y'all might've been going off to offsite places outside of North Texas to do your mission assignments, we wanna let you know that we're available. And so, Hopefully we have our summer camp for July and there will be opportunities for you to sign up to volunteer with us. And if you wanna know more about that, you can email me directly and I'll drop my email in the chat in just a minute. But my email is just katie, K-A-T-I-E at ntcumc.org. And we can talk about how we can connect with our local churches in doing the work that we do as Go Camp. So is there any questions? You hear Justin is coming in. Sorry, that was a question. I was trying to take care of something else at the same time. Okay. <laughs> I can't walk and chew gum. <laughs> But does anybody else have any questions for me as far as like what it takes to be a host site or what Go Camp is, if you haven't heard about it before? Yes, Katie, what does it uh, take to be a site? So to be a host site, um, I'll start with the breakdown of how we are set up. So Go Camp comes into the community and we have two options of a structure that we use. And the two options are, we'll do field trips on Tuesdays and Thursdays and we'll split our groups by age appropriate. And our host site picks that field trip. 
And so for that option, that's $85 per camper. So Go Camp charges the host site per camper. And as far as being a host site, the host site decides how much of that cost to pass on to the community. And so what most of our sites do is they charge $25 or 15 or whatever, but, and that offsets the cost um, of how much GoCap is charging you. So in order to be a host site, you would commit to hosting the camp. And so you would be the hub for us because we do go out on field trips, but you would be our main location site. And we are a day camp. And so we start from, our staff arrives at 7.30, but drop-off starts at eight. And um, we go through four and that time is also adjustable. Cause like I said, we also meet with the community to see what best works best for them. And we have a minimum of 50 campers and we try to work with our host sites as well. Cause sometimes some of our sites might not be able to get to that 50 number, but if you're in that 40 to 50 sweet spot, We'll still work with you, but we have to have a workable number of campers to be able to run camp, if that makes sense. And the other option that we do is we'll do field trips Tuesday through Friday, which means we'll be off-site most of the week, and we'll still open up with worship, and we'll still have lunch every day, and we'll still close with worship <clears throat> unless we're traveling back from a field trip. And our host site, um, that's what I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> so Go Camp brings in myself, the director, and then I have two program staff and a worship leader. And the host site decides whether they want to utilize the worship leader or they want to use their own worship leader. And we've had some sites who wanted to use their own worship team, and that's completely fine. But we also provide access to that. And so our host site provides the place where we'll meet, and Go Camp brings the supplies for the activities and everything that we'll be doing. And as far as a host site, because we're only bringing in four staff, our host sites are responsible for the volunteers because that's how we're capable of running a camp with just four staff persons and the host site and volunteers. And we keep our ministry safe ratios of one to seven. And so if we have 50 campers, Go Camp asks that you have at, Go Camp asks that you have at least a minimum of eight volunteers so that we can always keep our ratio of two adults in a space um, with our campers because even though our ratio is one to seven we always want to keep two adults in a space when we're working with our campers for the safety of our campers and the safety of the adults as well and pretty much we start looking for what our summer camp is going to look like for the following year once we wrap up our current year. And also even throughout this time, so we, somebody, a host site might come to me and say, hey, Katie, I wanted to do Go Camp 2020, but it's not looking that well. Can we go ahead and look at what 2021 is looking like? So you can sign up for, to be a host site as early as you want to, or as late as the summer is about to start, if that makes sense. Did I answer your question? Can you talk about some of those, um, some of the trips and some of the options? Because I think, you know, even if people aren't utilizing Go Camp, um, they may be looking for some of those activities for their own church groups. Um, as again, as hopefully the social distancing uh, guidelines sort of uh, relax a little bit, what are some of those things that, that you offer uh, that other people can either take advantage of through Go Camp or on their own? Yeah, so we offer field trip options and GoCamp actually books those field trips for you. So the host site doesn't have to worry about the logistics of that. But the some of the sites that we do go to is Trinity Forest Adventure Park. And they the main thing we do out there is the zip lining, but they also have ground activities as well. But our campers love the zip lining. So some of them go for the first time. Because like I said, a lot of the campers that we work with may not have the opportunity to experience these type of field trips on their own or in their own community. And so zip lining is one of them. We've gone to the Perot Museum. Uh, we've also done, I just forgot the whole lake's name, uh, out there by Princeton. What's the name, Joseph? Levon, Lake Levon. So we'll go out to Lake Levon and we'll do uh, water activities pretty much everything that you probably experience in the summer camp, we try to make that accessible to our campers. 
And a lot of these sites we've worked with for the past three years or so. And so we have a relationship with them. And so they know who Go Camp is and they know that the kids that we're bringing, this might be their first time to experience anything like that. And so they always work really well with us. And so those are just some of the field trips, but we're not limited to those sites that I mentioned. We also take recommendations for possible sites. That's why I'm very intentional about going into the communities and talking to them because they might say, if I'm out at Wichita Falls, they might not want to go to Trinity Forest Adventure Park because that's a four hour drive or three hour drive to the park. And so, yeah. Yeah, so there's a there's a consciousness on trying to keep it local, especially, you know, trying to find those spaces around those mission opportunities around the host site, uh, which again, I think a lot of our churches are going to be looking for. Um, and just to sort of, you know, clarify, you work, your, your camps mostly um, work with children, uh, but there are opportunities for uh, youth and youth groups to come and help um, in sort of a missional capacity. You sort of talked about uh, that you were piloting that program, uh, you know, with Creekwood this, or we're planning to this summer and still may be hoping to in some capacity, uh, but that's an opportunity as well. So, right. um, quick question. If you want to host a camp, can your volunteers be the older teens, like the high school kids? Yeah, so a lot of, so take First Richardson, for example, they'll have their older youth come in, serve as um, leaders, and so they'll actually, like, run our Bible study times and activities, but the only caveat to that is they don't count towards our adult ratio, so we'll still have to have enough adults to, over the age of 18, to count for our ratio, but we do offer opportunities for our older youth to serve in the capacity of leadership and make sure that they're actually feeling like they have a leadership role versus I'm just telling you to do something. And what I do with our sites who bring in their older youth to serve in those leadership capacity, I don't charge them for the per camper rate because they're serving as a working role. Any other questions? Again, Katie, uh, Katie threw her uh, email in the chat, uh, just katie at ntcumc.org. Um, and so if you have any other questions about GoCamp or how to get involved or some other things that, uh, that Katie does in sort of preparation or some of those places, definitely uh, reach out to her. She'd love to talk with you more. Um, same for me. Uh, we are, again, in the process of uh, still working on the curriculum for 2020 uh, and still very much needs a lot of work. And so if that's something that you are uh, willing and able to help with, uh, then we would love to have you be a part of our uh, curriculum writing team, especially as we uh, make this push to try to get uh, the first part of curriculum out by the end of May. So uh, definitely uh let me know if that's something that you're interested in uh my email is joseph at ntc umc.org uh, so I'll throw that in the chat there um so definitely reach out to me um if you're interested we'll make sure that you're on any emails that go out as far as uh, uh curriculum stuff or if you just have questions about how the curriculum can be utilized or ideas on things to add to the website things that uh the children's directors, uh, youth directors, families uh, might need slash want in this in this time. We want to uh, be a resource to you uh, in this time in any way that we can. And so definitely don't hesitate uh, to reach out. I'm just going to throw it out there for one last opportunity for questions. Um, and if not, we will uh, we'll close this thing out. All right, so I dropped my email office and cell because a lot of times I am offsite. <laughs> so if you need to contact me, you have both of those. And as well, I put our website in there so that you can get more information. There's a specific spot for what it takes to be a host site as well. But if you just email me or call me, I'm always willing to talk to you about it. Well, I am going to, I just sent her a message privately but hopefully she says yes. I'm gonna ask Kay Ash if she will uh, say a little prayer for us 
for all those wonderful people in this chat that are that are doing ministry and working hard for their families and their churches. Uh, Kay, do you mind? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, we come to you with our hearts open wide, hoping for your bold guidance in this time of confusion and uncertainty about what's going to come in the future. What we do know as Easter people is that we are loved and cared for, and you will always wrap your arms around us as we journey together in this uncertain time. Put a bright light in front of us so we know which way to go and what to do so that we can serve the children of our conference with the best of the gospel that we have to offer and with the best of our energy. We are creative people. We know the Holy Spirit is carbonated and energizing us, and we will figure this out, and it will be something. And it will honor you, God. It will. So be with us, love us, care for us, keep us safe and healthy. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Thanks, Kay. All right. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Uh, we, we have this recorded, so if you missed anything or you want to share it with anybody, uh, we'll have that recording up on the ntcumc.org website. Uh, we'll also make sure to link it on Facebook and other places as well. So be on the lookout. Thanks.